What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. I'm getting ready to chop the top on this car. Now, if you're not familiar with this project, this is a 1930 Ford Model A that a buddy of mine pulled out of a garage. Uh, it was just a bone stock car. Uh, basically, all you're looking at from the original car is the 1930 Model A body. Uh, it's on a 1932 frame. I've started getting a rear end under it. It's got a nine inch. Uh, started getting some speedway front end parts and stuff under there But as far as the chop goes, I'm gonna be cutting about four and a half or maybe five inches out of it and Before I do that I want to do a little bit of experimenting because I've got a new laser welder that I think is going to be Better to use on this than uh, a traditional method of either TIG or MIG welding that I would normally use now, because I don't throw anything away, I actually have the pieces of metal that I cut out of my 1930 Model A coupe. So this is about five inches. I also chopped that about five inches. And uh, the plan is just to cut these apart. We'll weld them back together using various methods. I'm gonna do MIG, TIG, and then the laser welder. And we'll see how they come out. We'll see how much finishing is required, see how much heat distortion I get. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It should be a pretty interesting test. All right, so I've got a few samples cut here. Uh, this first one here, we're going to be using for the MIG weld. This one doesn't really fit together great, but that's okay because when I MIG weld panels, I like to have a slight gap like that. Uh, but these two here are fitting very nicely and we're gonna just butt those right up together. Uh, so these ones I'll use uh, these penguin clamps to hold everything in alignment. And for these here, I'm just going to do a series of little tacks and I'll just hold it where I need it to be. Uh, so we'll do the TIG weld on this one and then I'll do the laser weld on this one here. All right, for the MIG welding test, I've got my Everlast Cyclone 312. Be honest this is a little overkill for sheet metal like this but it will do the job just fine it's just a little heavy uh, now i've got everything lined up nice making sure that all these pieces are in alignment just perfect and i think we're ready to go
All right, that was painful. Uh, like I said, I normally do not MIG weld sheet metal, at least not anymore. Um, and this is why, because it just doesn't ever come out good. I feel like I'm just globbing metal on there, which, you know, essentially you kind of are. Um, I just don't get the control that I feel that I need. Um, so we're gonna clean this up. I can already tell it's warped all over the place. It's warped in every di direction. It's got a crown in the middle. The, the panels are warped this way too. Uh, it just kind of is what it is with MIG welding, in my opinion. Um, you know, again, my gun is kind of over the top. Uh, it's way too much for this, but even on the lowest setting, uh, it was kind of burning through in spots. So let's clean it up, see how it looks, and then we'll go on to the other tests. All right, my go-to for cleanup is these Cubitron Rolox. Uh, Two-inch one here might be a little underkill for this because I have so much to do. Uh, but this is a 36 grit. Uh, they work very well for this, so let's get this thing cleaned up. All right, that's about as good as it's gonna get for now. I just don't wanna spend a ton of time on this. It's not really necessary for the demonstration. So, of course, we've got this big peak here. Uh, it's also got some warping this way. It's kind of got, you know, hills and valleys all the way down it. And that was just, it's my fault uh, because of the uneven heat distribution and everything. And you could see, you know, I had kind of a tighter heat affected zone through here, but then where I was filling those holes, it just got really crazy and everything. Uh, now. Not a big deal. We could still use, you know, hammer and dolly to work this thing out. The problem is I've got so much junk on the backside that all that needs to be cleaned off too. Um, so again, I'm not gonna worry about that for now for this demonstration, but you know, like I said, I'm just not a big MIG person when it comes to welding thin sheet metal like this. If I had to weld a quarter inch or half inch plate or something, yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna grab my MIG gun. Uh, but for sheet metal, I generally go with TIG. All right, for my TIG welder, I also have an Everlast. This is a Power TIG 315. Uh, I'll be running probably around 55, 60 amps or so. And here's the setup. I just, I know it looks a little crazy, but I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. And here's my torch setup. I kind of have a bigger cup on there. Again, it will help me see, it'll help you guys see. Uh, so let's give this a go.
All right, obviously that went quite a bit better. Uh, it's got, you know, just a little bit of warping there, a little crown, a little dip here and there. Um, and I actually worked this area here, and you can see, I mean, it was very minimal work and very little grinding to get it right, and that's, that's very good right there. I did start it burning through up here just because I was having a hard time seeing um, but, you know, if it was on a car or whatever, it would, it would have been a lot easier to work and a lot easier to see. So here's a look at the back side of the panel. It probably could have been pressing down a little harder on the pedal. Uh, I was just, you know, like I said, trying to kind of having a hard time seeing some spots. Um, but yeah, I mean, that came out very good. I'm really happy with that. And like I said, I'm just a lot better at TIG welding. I have a lot more experience with it. It's primarily what I've done, whether it's welding sheet metal like this or welding even a little thicker materials. All right, and then here's the part that I'm really excited for, the laser welder. So this is an X-Tool metal fab. I have the actual laser welder here, and then this is just the wire feed. Open this up, show you guys. See, there's the wire, kind of just like a MIG gun. And then this all comes up here. You got some cables, and we've got the actual welding gun here. So I've never done this before. Uh, we're just gonna see how it goes. We're gonna learn together. Now I will say on other projects that I've used the laser welder on, I've had very good results. It's been very impressive so far. Uh, again, it's all new to me, so I'm just learning as I go. Uh, I've just never tried it on anything this thin before. So usually I would just be in standard mode and you just select your material and then you select like the wire size and the material thickness and then you have to enable everything and just confirm a couple things to get it to work. But I actually found this advanced mode and it has a tack welding setup. So I've never tried this. Uh, I didn't adjust any settings and this is my first time here trying it. And I was really surprised with this. It really worked great. Um, and I end up putting a ton of tacks on there, probably 10 times as many as I actually needed, but it just works so well. And there was so little heat put into the part. There was really no distortion at all. It's really crazy. All right, this is kind of crazy. So this is the tax setting. Uh, you can make adjustments on it. I only made a couple of them. I could probably play with it a little bit more, but this is completely held together with those little tacks and look at all the penetration that it got. That's crazy. And while I was in that advanced mode window, I noticed that there was a seam welding set up. Uh, so again, didn't adjust anything here. I'm just trying it as it was. And uh, uh, I was again, very impressed with this. The, the hardest part with using this is that as you feed the wire, it actually pushes the gun back. And it's, it's, I shouldn't say it's hard. It's just a weird feeling because it's not like anything I'm used to, you know, with MIG, it's feeding the wire, but that's not actually pushing the gun. You know, you can be pushing like into your puddle with MIG, uh, this, as you feed wire, it literally pushes the gun back at whatever speed it needs to move at. Um, it just is something that takes a bit of practice. I, I definitely need more practice, but I know that once I get good at it, uh, this is really going to be something here. And you'll notice that I'm kind of hopping around here, kind of like what you would do if you were MIG welding it. That is definitely not necessary, in my opinion. Um, I don't know why I was doing that. Again, I'm just kind of experimenting here, so I definitely wouldn't do that. I would just do one solid pass. All right, so here's the finished product, and I really got to say, this is absolutely crazy. That is a beautiful weld, nice and small. And look at the backside. Look at all that penetration. And it was so fast. It's right now, because I have so little experience with this, it's almost too fast for me just because I, I wasn't expecting it to move that fast. Now, I did get some warping here, but to be honest, I think it's because I didn't do a complete weld here. I probably should have done that. Those little tiny tack welds actually ended up breaking there. Um, but I mean, look in this direction. That's perfect. It is perfectly flat. I really can't get over this. It just came out so nice. Like, I just need to do a very little bit of cleanup on there. Just dress that weld down a hair and this thing's ready for filler. Or I mean, honestly, I could probably just metal finish a lot of this. Um, that's very impressive. I really can't believe it.
And here's a look at all the panels again. So this is the MIG, you know, I just really had a heck of a time with this. I'm really very not good at MIG. Um, so, you know, I'm sure people can do better than that. It's just not my thing. You know, TIG, I think came out great. Uh, it does need quite a bit of cleanup though, at least compared to this. It was much less than what I would need with the MIG. Um, you know, and this is certainly usable. This this is great in my opinion. But I mean, this here, I just can't get over it. It's just so crazy how easy that was. And and you can see like here where I really got in the groove. If I could have done that the whole way, I really don't think this would have moved much at all. And and I definitely think you know welding here and and then on the other end first would have been a much better way to start it. All right, I was already really excited to chop the top on this, but now I just am, I'm ready to go today. Uh, but I'm going to do a little more practice first just so I can get, you know, more control of it. It's just brand new to me. That is literally the first time I've ever welded that. And this is uh, 19 gauge steel, I believe. Um, so, you know, a little more practice and I think I'll be very proficient with it. Um, and, you know, with the TIG, it's not terrible. It was always just a pain to do the cleanup work, um, you know, like with anything. Uh, just a lot of metal working involved with it, you know, filler, that kind of stuff. I feel like I'll have very minimal, if really any at all. I, again, I think just a quick run over with a grinder and it'll be ready to go. So I'm gonna keep practicing on that. I won't post a long form video on it. If you wanna see what I'm practicing on, uh, check out either the shorts or Instagram or whatever. I'll have links down below or up top, wherever they are. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about this machine, the X-Tool Metal Fab, I'll put links down below for it. It is really cool. Like, I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm beside myself. Every time I play with this thing, I, I get more and more excited about it because it's just something new and it works very well. It's very impressive. Uh, so check that out, learn more about it, check out my other videos on it, and uh, come back and check out the chop top on this. See you guys later.